French tanks. Some people love them, some people hate them, and I'm pretty sure everyone likes shooting at them on World of Tanks console. So today's video is going to showcase the French tank line. We have done the American tank line, we've done a full review, and today's video is going to cover every single tank line, the pros, cons, and what you should be watching out for, some of the worst tanks, and give my ideas as to how you can play them, at least to a degree where you feel like you're going to be confident when you're jumping into the battle. So first things first, let's talk about what French tanks typically have and that is accounted for in the form of armour. Armour on the French tanks is not really a thing if you want solid, uh, very decent armour because for the most part the French tanks are paper, most of the heavy tanks even have these weak points that are very easy to pen, the side armour is terrible on all of the French tanks to be honest with you, uh, and that means that you get peppered with shells. But there are some advantages, you tend to get pretty decent uh, main armaments which means you can dish out quite a lot of damage quite nicely with these tanks, and it's always a bit of fun to actually jump in a bit of an underdog tank. Now that we've given a little bit of an overview as to the tanks uh, as a whole, let's actually jump into some specifics. For this video, we will not be looking at tiers 2 and 3, and we'll just make our way through uh, from tier 5 all the way up to tier 10 of every single tank line. And the first one, being on the first uh, on the tech tree, it's the BDRG-1B, and this is a very, very nice tank indeed. It's a tank that actually, when you're fully upgraded, can be a little bit of a powerhouse. Um, that's because the main armament of this 90mm has a solid, uh, solid gun and that means that you can dish out a lot of damage with the tank uh, and potentially you can uh, really make it work down at tier 5 and I actually think it's pretty competitive as a heavy tank down at this tier. Then of course, as you move on, you get the ARL44, which when fully upgraded, like the BDR, is somewhat okay. It can be performed quite well, and that's because you can get 105mm, which I would recommend. Um, if not, go for the 90mm, and of course you can get the benefits of having that with regards to the damage per minute. The tank itself, as with the BDR, has armour like you'd expect from a French tier 5 slash 6 tank, and that is that most tanks will probably go through you, um, but you may be able to pull off a couple of bounces, so you want to make sure that you're angling and just basically being a little bit of a nuisance, wiggling like this in the game as you're going towards them, or from a 3D perspective when you're in charge of the tank, you want to be doing this uh, to just try and make it a little bit harder for people to pinpoint your weak points. Obviously, Capolas are typically a thing for the French tanks. It's not like the Soviet ones where a Apparently a Capola 1mm thick is actually uh, a weak point. Anyway, moving forward, you then get the uh, tank that gets a very, very bad name, and that's the AMX M4 MLE 45, the French Tier 7 heavy tank. And this is actually one I really enjoyed. It is definitely an underdog, and if you want to check out some videos on these tanks, then you can do in uh, the Gameplay and Tank Reviews playlist, and you can actually take a look at each of them. Uh, the key thing with this tank, though, is when you're fully upgraded and you have the tank all kitted out, it can be really, really fun. And actually, we're going to purchase it since the tank sale is on line at the minute and that hence why we're doing the full tech tree uh, review at this point so I can go back and I can buy some of these tanks and showcase um, them off to you in some upcoming videos. Obviously you can see here that the guns typically as you go through get better but I predominantly prefer the higher alpha damage ones just so that you can be a little bit more uh, pack a punch against the opponents that you'll be facing. Now then, nonetheless, back to the tech tree. After the AMX, you then lead on to two different AMXs, one in the AMX 65T, and we'll go up to the AMX M454 line uh, first. So, the AMX 65T. Having played this tank and having ground through at least a little bit of this tank, I can tell you it's pretty damn terrible. A stock, this thing is awful, it's slow, it's sluggish, and this is probably the worst tank in the tech tree line, and potentially in the French tech tree itself. This is a quite possibly one of the worst tanks you can play unless you get fully upgraded at which point um, it will be a little bit less bad but still very bad the armor doesn't work the turret armor is not that good and yeah you're basically just wanting to get to the next tank then when you get to the next tank have played it on pc extensively and this is actually a tank that is 
pretty okay, especially when you get the top turret upgrade that you can see here. Um, this turret makes it so much better, you get more hit points, you get better view range, and of course the turret itself actually gets decent. Uh, looks more like what you'd see on the MX M4 MLE 54, the tier 10. Obviously engine upgrades, these are things that you cannot wait for with the French heavies because they are so sluggish to begin with. Um, but once you do get fully upgraded, they feel a hell of a lot better, and of course you do start getting nice alpha damage at like 5 570 or something like that with the top gun don't quote me on that it might be less it might be more i can't quite remember but i know as you get further forward you do get slightly more alpha damage than just the 400 and then of course when you reach the tier 10 the amx m4 mle 54 you figure out that the whole tank line was pretty much average and you were kind of waiting for that amazing tank and they never really came so overall opinion amx I think it's interesting, it has some nice alpha damage, I think you get the choice of two guns, you can pick 560 alpha or you can pick the 400 alpha. I personally would rather go with the um, with 130mm and the 560 alpha since this tank's pretty sluggish, you're not going to be able to get into position that quickly um, and yeah you want to make sure that you're dealing as much damage as possible when you're coming up against those medium tanks and also the any other kind of higher damage per minute tanks that you'll come up against. Now then. Going back down to the AMX M4, we'll then lead on to the AMX 5100 and of course going on to the 50B. Now the AMX 5100 stock, dreadful absolutely dreadful the amx 5100 is terrible and that is because this tank has a autoloader and it's not because of the fact it has an autoloader that's terrible it's actually because of the fact that this tank is so bad penetration wide with the standard gun and that's because you get 240 alpha you have terrible penetration and you basically are a walking talking hitbox for everyone to take advantage of uh, you're really slow as well because as with all of the french heavy slash mediums uh, stock they're very very sluggish um, and that is exactly the case however when you do get fully upgraded you do have the highest alpha damage tank I believe at tier 8 potentially in terms of clip potential because you do get a six shot autoloader with 300 damage per shot equaling 1800 total alpha damage that you can dish out but remember you do have a three second injury clip reload which makes it super super long not just purely from the fact of reloading but it makes it super long uh, just to get the damage out of the way so yeah a tank that could be better but is okay and not absolutely terrible unless you're stock of course now then moving on you then go to the amx 5120 which is a similar sort of story you don't have particularly great armor and that is the exact same for the 50b when you reach the tier 10 uh, but what you do have with this is the fact that you do get some nice alpha damage on the top gun of this thing you get 400 as opposed to the 240 that you get with the stock gun and 300 with the net first gun um, and that means that you have a very nice amount of damage you can kick out all in one go uh, reduces the amount of time that you have to spend just sat there pumping rounds out into people because you only have less we have less rounds to dish out but the same amount of damage um, and yeah in general a pretty good tank and it means that on the battlefield when you see these things you do think um, and you do have to make sure that you don't get caught out because that kind of sums up the fact that it can be dangerous in scenarios but probably not in all scenarios uh, regardless and then of course moving on to the tier 10 the amx 50b um, kind of one of those that is pretty damn good and it's probably the best out of the tech tree line in terms of uh, so far including the French heavy tanks as well and that's because this thing gets a nice four shot autoloader 400 alpha damage per shot uh, very much like the T57 heavy except a faster version um, it's got less armor as you'd expect the turret armor is like paper um hull armor is actually pretty strong albeit that the kind of inner drive wheel right next to the track at the front of the tank uh, is terrible and you can get penned easily so if you've ever seen machines you know exactly about that weak point it's the inner drive wheel you shoot it at the front of the track and you can pretty much pen it automatically without even having like a high caliber or high penetration round so that's kind of one weak point of the 50b itself 
health. But all in all, this tank is pretty nice. The mobility, the flexibility, and of course, uh, being able to have some bouncy hull armor makes this thing a little bit good. Um, I'm sure that when I manage to get this on console, we'll do a full review of the tank if I don't just purchase it flat out for free XP as I'm saving up um, some of that. And with the 14,000 gold I've just got sat on the account doing nothing, might as well put it to good use. Either way, moving on down, you then end up with a kind of intermediate of the Lorraine 40T, which leads off of the AMX 5100. Comparatively, between the Lorraine 40T and the AMX 5120, the Lorraine has the kind of advantage in terms of gun statistics, and you're probably going to find the Lorraine is a more overall better tank. Is it necessarily super overpowered or anything like that? No, neither of these two tanks are, uh, but it will be one that I would recommend you guys go towards if you have the time. Now then, moving back down to tier 5, we start with the little rat tank, the AMX EOC BIS, and this is the start of the light tanks. Um, the BIS is a really, really fun one. It's definitely one I would recommend to every single person who wants to play World of Tanks console because you have so many different opportunities to uh, stay hidden. And because the camo on this tank is amazing um, and the fact that it is so small, it can really bring out some interesting moments and fun moments that you just can't have in a lot of tanks on World of Tanks console so definitely one to try is it overpowered absolutely not uh, but you do get 240 alpha damage at tier 5 in a light tank but it is not the most accurate uh, and you kind of have to be up close and personal to really make it work but equally you're not like super super quick to the point where you can kind of dart in and dart out so yeah make of that what you will a fun tank nonetheless and one that I would never really say is terrible. Uh, then you move on to probably one of the best tier 6 light tanks in the game, if not the best tier 6 light tank in the game, and that is the AMX 12T. So what does the AMX 12T offer? Let's actually take a look in the garage. It offers quite a lot, and that is in the form of an autoloader. It's the first kind of autoloader that I probably ever actually got within the game, um, and that's because um, this tank is one that can dish out quite a bit of damage you've got a, a four shot autoloader with what like a hundred and something damage per shot you've got um, a pretty nice uh, gun so you can deal over or approximately 600 damage in a clip which um, is very much like what the entire French tank line is is all about it's about going in dealing all your damage really quickly nipping in nipping out being super small and hard to hit um, and you can get away with a lot with these tanks and of course that is very good for when you're trying to learn the light tank meta and how you can kind of uh, go off in but also make sure that you are kind of uh, decent at getting to know spotting as well because they are so small and they yield great still concealment um, and yeah make sure that you do kind of take advantage of that then you move on to the AMX 1375 we'll get onto the wheeled light tanks later on uh, but the AMX 1375 is probably one of my favorite tier 7 light tanks uh, in the game it is quite possibly my favorite tier 7 light tank and that is because I have played this to death I have genuinely played this tank so much it is so much fun the fact that this tank gets uh, such an amazing gun at this low tier the fact that you can go in you can do so much with it um, makes it so much fun and of course I will do a full review actually coming soon on the AMX 1375 because we haven't done it so far or if we have it was a long long time ago probably like four years ago or something crazy like that and it was probably back when my videos were yeah not the nicest of quality or at least I hadn't been as practiced as I am now nonetheless we have kitted out the tank whilst we're talking about it and the key thing about this tank is you do get 135 alpha damage much like the AMX 12T however this one um, is just a more well-rounded tank it's pretty flexible um, and I've really enjoyed actually jumping in it playing it and of course um, you have the same alpha but of course reload much quicker and a very nice darty kind of going off in tank 
Then you move on to the Batch at 12T, which once again was one of my favourites. Um, you've also got a little bit more alpha damage with this tank, 170, which when you compare the auto-loading clip potential, it's slightly higher, but it means that you do have the ability to go in more often and also you reload in a similar sort of time. So um, these are tanks that I really enjoy because at the end of the game, if you can prolong yourself or at least avoid taking loads of hits at the beginning, you can go off in after a lot of these heavy tanks that just cannot keep up with you and at this point you're also getting a lot higher um, kind of mobility you've got 68 kilometers an hour with this tank comparatively to like 60 kilometers an hour which means that you can be a little bit more aggressive and of course if you really wanted to you could put on some speed boost equipment to bring that up even further and make it a little bit more flexible um, and make the YOLO meta a little bit more fun but yeah, fantastic tank, really enjoy the French light tanks in general. Uh, and then leading on from the third or the batch at 12T, you go on to the batch at 25T AP, the kind of auto-loading medium tank uh, that rivals that of the Lorraine and of course uh, the AMX 5120. The Batch at 25T I've done a review on not that long ago really 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 underwhelming or <laughs> underpowered tank um, in terms of people always underestimate this tank it really is actually so much fun it's really really powerful as well you get super high uh, alpha damage clip potential out of this which means you can go in and just destroy people from full health really 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 fun and of course that then leads on to the batch at 25t which is a uh, an aging tank it used to be super super competitive and fun to play but it's kind of lost its edge over a lot of the other tanks that have come in recently there's so many better options i feel like uh, with the introduction of kind of buffs to t57 heavy to the 50b to um basically a lot of the other mediums that you see that the dpm disadvantage of playing the batch at and all of the extra um disadvantages that you get with this thing being pretty sluggish being a fairly meaty tank uh, in terms of the size of it um, makes it yeah a little less uh, kind of interesting to play and there are much better options in my personal opinion uh, than this tank but yeah nonetheless a very good one a very solid tank but nothing to op Right then, uh, having having gone through the batch at 12T, you then go to the AMX 1390. This is the next tier 9 light tank in this field, uh, and it comes in the form of this tank, which we'll actually purchase here, might as well, since it's 30% off and the best saving you'll probably ever get. Um, and that means that this tank is one where the alpha damage starts to go from having like fairly okay clip potential to having fantastic clip potential. You can see here, let's kit it out. Um, this one one goes from having 170 alpha from the batch at 12t all the way up to 240 which makes this uh, a hell of a lot more usable and of course um, you do get all of the benefits of the previous kind of french uh, french light tank sorry and of course making sure that you do put on camo making sure that you do put on uh, your coated optics and making sure that you have ver vertical stabilizers is almost a must with these tanks you can't use advanced gun rammer because they are all um, actual uh, auto loaders and of course you can't use them um, but yeah a really really fun tank to use and uh, I really do recommend you trying out the French light tanks because they are probably the easiest ones to get into to try out light tank gameplay and I think that they're the most rewarding as well once you've mastered them and then it leads on to the AMX 13105 which is probably the worst one of from tier 7 upwards um, tier for tier and that's unfortunate since you would expect that having 390 alpha damage and having a three shot clip would be fun it just kind of isn't because the intra clip reload is three seconds base and of course you can get that down just slightly to 2.7 seconds but it's still not enough to make this tank uh, playable in my personal opinion and you have to spend what like six seconds circling around someone to get off all of your clip it's just not enough uh, or it's just too long and by that time you could have quite easily taken quite a few hits whereas the earlier tanks you know you can dish out all your damage and leave within like five or six seconds um, comparatively um, and they are more like uh, usable as well because you can get off a couple shots whereas this you have to get off all three to really make it worth it and so yeah a little bit less um, fun to play 
Then of course going from the 13105 we then looked downwards in the tech tree to the AMX30 and the AMX30 was a tank I loved. I absolutely love the French tier 9 and tier 10 mediums, the AMX30 and the AMX30B. Uh, both of them fantastic tanks, um, super underpowered in my personal opinion, loads of people underrate them, um, much like most of the French tanks in, in World of Tanks console to be honest, um, but I highly recommend you do try these out, if you've liked the Leopard 1 you'll love the AMX 30 and the 30B, they're basically the similar sort of tanks, except the French equivalent and they've got a couple of other niche kind of uses. Um, key thing about this is nice alpha damage and the ability to dish out a lot of damage in a short period of time, decent vision range and so you can combine both damage and assistance uh, to have some really really amazing results in these both of these tanks. Uh, really really do think that you should try them out and give them a go especially if you're a medium tank player uh, as I think that they are great tanks not superb or like the top class mediums in the game but definitely a solid competitor. Now then, let's move down to the other tech tree that we have, and that is the French Wheeled Light Tanks, the newest addition to the French tank line. And that comes in the form of the Tier 6, the AMD 178B, uh, kind of the... I never liked these. I think that the entire tank line is pretty mediocre. Um, they're nowhere near as overpowered as they were on PC, which is good. I didn't want to see overpowered tanks, um, but I think they went with the controls wise and how you can actually use them effectively in the game. It makes them very difficult on the controller to make them work 100% and so uh, you do have quite a bit of a problem when actually trying to use these effectively and because of the kind of uh, the way in which the meta on console is that most normal tanks like the 13105 can go the similar sort of speed as that of the EBR which makes it kind of almost pointless in playing the EBR for the most part because you lose so much in terms of uh, playing it. So overall I'm not going to go into detail on these. I wasn't particularly a fan. I've played them on PC, they were very good. On console, not so good. I have tested them out on console quite a bit. So yeah, wasn't a massive fan uh, nonetheless. But moving then down, we go to the horrible and disgusting line in the French tank line, and that is the artillery pieces. We start with tier five, which is useless pretty much. And uh, then you move on to uh, the tier six, which is very 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 good uh, tier for tier and that's because this thing has 700 alpha damage and actually has 180 five millimeters of penetration with its heat rounds that it can get so you can shotgun with this thing uh, and of course when you're fully upgraded with it you get a very nice uh, top gun as well so you can get 950 alpha damage and uh, increased penetration on your HE um, yeah I didn't like the fact that this is that good in the game you reload super quick as well so yep definitely a thumbs down in terms of balance for the game but nonetheless a thumbs up for it's actually good um, then we move on to the Lorraine 15550 uh, this is a less powerful version uh, tier for tier as the tier 6 um, pretty mediocre you don't have that big of a gun arc and I found it a little bit tedious to play then you move on to the Lorraine 15551 uh, I've played this wasn't particularly that fun like yeah 1250 alpha damage is okay but you just don't pen enough with these uh, to really warrant and it's not that much fun anyway playing artillery so I don't know why you'd pick the lower alpha damage tanks um, and then of course moving on to the batch at 15555 which is uh, the tank that I'm currently on I mean I don't enjoy this tank I think it's pretty boring um, and that it just doesn't have enough for me uh, personally in terms of enjoyment wise yes you can hit things really accurately but yeah 1250 alpha damage isn't quite the 2250 that you can get from the t92 and then of course when you do get to the tier 10 it's the only real auto loading tier 10 artillery that you have in the game it has four lots of 1250 alpha if I am right in presuming that I should probably know that by now I've been hit by this thing so much yes it has four shots so a total combined damage between all of them if you they manage to pen every single shot of just the measly 5000 alpha now of course actually penning that many rounds with this thing is not likely uh, but yeah this thing as an auto loading artillery can be pretty daunting and I'm not that far away from getting it 
probably won't be high priority on my list nonetheless. So, moving back down, we start with the blatantly, genuinely super OP S35CA. I have managed to get a pools medal in this thing. Um, 223 alpha damage with 330 alpha that reloads in 7 seconds and has a total DPM of about 2,800. Um sound broken to you oh yeah and it's a tier 5 by the way um wargaming obviously uh kind of fell asleep on their keyboard and just started mashing buttons and somehow came up with this tank that you even pay for premium rounds that have more alpha damage they're faster and get more penetration there's literally no reason why unless you can't afford it that you would fire standard in this vehicle uh, and then even the HE round have okay penetration for light tanks and it, but there's no point in firing that either because the chance of you bouncing or not damaging is not worth the extra 30 damage that you get with the HE so yeah a pretty much premium exclusive tank if you wanted to use it I have three marked it I'm sorry um I did boast like a 90% win rate in this thing after 80 battles that I'm sure some of you probably saw from my last video. Um, so yeah, this thing is absolutely broken. Genuinely one of the most broken tanks in the game if you get a good player in it. And yeah, that might be the said for loads of different tanks. But I mean like if a player, good player actually plays in this, it is genuinely really unbeatable um, in terms of how powerful this can be. I was playing in tier like eight or tier seven matches and getting like 3k damage every single game um, and in fact we could probably look at the statistics of this vehicle to showcase just how good it is um, I don't know how far down the list it's going to be because there's so many of them but there it is 82 games uh, I did lose a couple but 87% win rate averaging one and a half thousand damage in a tier five it's not bad at all uh, surviving nearly 70% of the games um, and with a destroy per game of th nearly three vehicles um, of course three marks and a mastery badge um, and of course since the marks of excellence have come out I played one game and it went down by five percent as you'd expect um, but yeah really really broken OP tier five the bad bathtub as it's nicknamed yeah just disgusting um definitely shouldn't be in the game at this level and yeah i expect wargaming won't nerf it either so yeah good luck if you're a new player <laughs> either nonetheless because that tank was pretty good they've of course got to give you a little bit of a terrible one when you then get the tier six and i'm actually going to purchase this one back i really enjoyed it um the tier six is the arl v39 and although you might think oh it's a tank that's going to be awful no because in fact you do get the same gun that you can get on the tier five and that makes this thing a hell of a lot more playable of course you get the premium rounds just like the previous but you get more damage per minute which makes makes this tank um, really really fun and you can rack up like 3k damage in games um, if you if it goes kind of okay and that's why I love it a uh, really good camo as well if you do kit out the tank with advanced concealment and you use coated optics um, yeah really really fantastic tank to play uh, really enjoyed it in fact I think that this thing probably gets more uh, of a bad name than it really deserves so just take that with a pinch of salt when you hear people crapping on the ARL V39. If you play it right and you play it how it's supposed to be, a like backline sneaky kind of tank destroyer that just takes away like pretty much half of your health in one singular shot, then this is amazing. Uh, and it does have good DPM as well for a tier 6. And now then, moving on from the tier 6, you then start getting into the probably the worst vehicle. Um, tier for tier in the tech tree line uh, for the Ameri uh, for the French TDs and that's the AMX <laughs> AC46 um, I like to call this tank the kind of bug it, it really should be squashed by Wargaming and just removed from the tech tree. I think it's terrible, um, but it makes it fun to play because you feel like genuinely one of the, like the game is trying to go against you when you're playing this vehicle. And so it, when you do have a good result, it's like genuinely like thumbs in the air, like screaming about how good you must be of a player when you actually have a game where you deal more damage than you've taken. But nonetheless... 
you've got to grind your way through it and you need like a hundred and something thousand sil a hundred and something thousand XP to get the next tank in the line, which is of course the AMX AC48. And this is a tank where the typical Fosh line comes in to play. And in fact, this vehicle is super, super good uh, in the right hands, but you do have to play it to the strengths of the French tank destroyers, which is uh, sitting at the back for a little bit at the beginning of the game. Don't lose your health at all. Don't go rushing in. And then as you kind of learn the aggressive side of the French TDs as the mid and late game happen, you can go off in, you can do your kind of thing, uh, and hopefully uh, you can come out on top. Of course, because of the alpha damage of these vehicles and the fact that they all have autoloaders from this point onwards, and not just any old autoloader, you do get a nice full uh, autoloader when you do get the 100mm, I believe it is. Um, so yeah, make sure that you do get towards the 120mm as fast as possible, because that's when the tank becomes actually usable. Um, and of course, you need the engine because the tank is super slow to begin with. Uh, so it is painful stock, but really worth it when you get fully upgraded. And then you move on to the best tank destroyer tier for tier in the um, French tank line, the Foch. So so the Foch is an amazing tank. In fact, it's probably better tier for tier than the Foch 155. And that's because this tank, um, yes, it has some negatives in the fact that you don't get a full clip potential like the Foch 155 does. I think the Foch 155 gets six clips uh, in the autoloader, whereas the Foch gets... I believe um, it gets something like uh, four shots in the Fosh. You'll have to quote me. Don't quote me on that until we've actually looked. But yeah, four shots in the clip, 400 alpha damage um, per shot, which means that you get 1600 alpha damage per clip, which means you can really dish out a lot of damage. And in fact, you reload in about 20 something seconds, which makes it um, a super high damage per minute and effective damage per minute as well, because you can dish out uh, all of your damage in one go. You don't have have to wait for someone to come around or maybe someone like leaves in b between time where you're kind of dishing out your shots intricate reload is an awful 2.4 seconds and that's without any equipment or a commander so that can come down even further really really fun tank to play and of course the best in the tech tree line and then you move on to the Fosh 155, which is the big daddy, the highest kind of alpha damage autoloader that is currently in the game, I think, in terms of World War II. Um, and that is because this thing gets a six shot 120 millimeter autoloader that has 2400 damage clip potential uh, and is a monstrosity the 120 millimeter is the one i always like to go with you can go with the 750 alpha damage gun that this gets or 770 but it's not that reliable in the reload and the damage per minute drop off that you get from actually using the 155 the intraclip reload of it it's not particularly that great and so I would 100% rather have the Fosh 155 and of course the clip potential uh, of or the inch clip reload sorry of the AMX Fosh um, is super super good with the uh, with the 120mm and that is without a commander it's 2 seconds so that can go down even further I really enjoy this tank super one for any of you wanting to get into autoloaders and of course it has a little bit of armour nothing too special because of the cupola on top which is a weak point that kind of big long vision bar that you can see on the top of the tank uh, but nonetheless really really fun one to play hopefully that gave you a good indication as to the french tanks in the game and whether they're actually any good in the game um, so let me know in the comment section down below if you disagree with any of these tanks we hopefully gave a good opinion as to them all which tank lines you should go down and we'll give my final opinion on my favorite tanks in the french tech tree line albeit i haven't fully completed the french wheeled vehicles on console but i have played the EBR 105 quite a bit uh, during testing. Nonetheless, um, the best vehicles for me personally on the French uh, tank line is going to be um, the AMX 30B. Really enjoyed this one, uh, really enjoyable line as well because you get to play the light tanks prior to it. Um, and then I would say uh, it's probably the 50B. The 50B is super fun and you get to try out uh, a variety of different and novel tanks that you don't necessarily get with a lot of the other tech tree lines. So it's always fun to have a bit of a mix up. Um, and then the 
the Fosh 155 line. Really, really fun one for me personally. Don't know whether you guys all agree, but yeah, those are kind of my top three picks uh, for the tech tree. Um, but remember, the French light tank line up to tier eight is also really good. In fact, up to tier nine, it's just the 13105 that I'm not particularly thrilled about. Um, but yeah, also try out the back chat 25 TAP. That was a good one. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comment section down below what you think, which ones you would pick. And of course, let me know which tank line you want me to follow next in terms of the full tech tree review. And I'll try my best to do that. We have done the full American one that you can check out as the previous video. Uh, because we've pretty much done the entire line and bought the entire line in the game recently due to the sales. So let me know uh, if you've got any specific line you want to see first. So thank you very much for watching. Of course, thank you for checking out the channel and subscribing and being supportive. And I hope that you join me in the next one. Goodbye.